Well, I think that people are slowly starting to surface from the uh, uh, real disasters of the, of the last couple of years and saying, well, you know, it seems to have stopped getting worse. Um, now, how are we going to make it get better? And uh, those businesses that are in Europe are looking around them and saying, well, where do we go from here? But after this um, unparalleled period of economic slump, um, I think people are looking around them and saying, well, now, is the EU really um, giving us everything that we should have in order to have another big market there alongside the United States and, of course, now Asia? Asia's motoring and really hardly faltered through the whole of this period. The US, of course, had a very bad time, and, and Europe did. But now you have other problems coming up in Europe, particularly regarding uh, how the euro is going to sustain the difficulties which it's looking at at the moment. And how do we really um, benefit from an economic area which is bigger than the US? And both the US and Europe have got to look at how they're going to compete with uh, Asia in general and, and China in particular. And I think those are some of the issues that would need to be addressed. Well, frankly, I don't think it's a question of the new leadership team. I mean, it's whoever is there. Um, and I think that, you know, we're talking about this from a business point of view and not from a political point of view. And I think the politicians need to understand that all the discussions which have been going on about the treaty and who does what and how and where, and I see this when I go to, to Brussels, there's far too much concentration on that and far too little on the practicalities. It's all very well having lengthy discussions about the treaty, which only a very small group of aficionados really understand. And people outside are saying, well, you know, but excuse me, um, we have to make a living and we have to help everybody else make a living. Those are the things that we need to concentrate on. I think it has to do the same as everybody else it has to do the same as happening in the United States. It needs to do it on a, in a coherent manner. And, of course, the EU is ideally placed to try to... Um, bring that coherence in, uh, and we're looking to see them do it. Now, uh, in the UK, if I can just speak from a UK point of view for a moment, we're obviously well in the EU and have been for a long time, but we're not in the Eurozone. So we're not subject to the same pressures that are happening to the countries that are in the Eurozone. But I think if you, if you look uh, more particularly at uh, the EU rather than just the Eurozone, we have to see how we can better leverage off the opportunities from all the um, parts of Europe. And I deliberately didn't say countries, because I think from this point of view, we have to try and regard it as a single market. And I know that's what they've been trying to do in Brussels for a long time. But it's still a good way to go. I suppose the simple callous answer would be to get rid of all the bureaucrats and let people get on with running their businesses. But of course, uh, more seriously, you do need rules. But I, I do feel when I go to Brussels that they've developed this into a, a fine art form. And as I was saying earlier, I think if, the, uh, if those who are responsible for developing the EU uh, spend their time concentrating on how to develop it, and perhaps rather less time on arguing about the niceties of whatever the latest uh, set of regulations are, um, the better it will be. Now, when you talk about regulation, of course people are going to say, ah, yes, but it's because we didn't have regulation or adequate regulation and we got the mess we were in before. Uh, that is absolutely true. But there's always a danger there that you end up with more regulation. We don't want more regulation. We, we want better regulation. You know, if you, if you look at the, the crisis we've been through, uh, the banks got themselves in a terrible mess. The insurance sector as a whole did very well, didn't get themselves in a mess, were well capitalized. And, you know, before anybody starts talking about AIG, the problems in AIG did not stem from their insurance business. So our position is that uh, the insurance sector generally, and Lloyd's in particular, 
did very well, came through this in good shape. Um, so, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it.